A Wednesday edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast sees number one friend of the podcast, Donnie Druin from All Sun Devils, swing by to talk the quarterback situation for the Arizona State Sun Devils. This is the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. My name is Richie Bradshaw and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils football, basketball, baseball, and otherwise. Thank you guys so much for making the Locked on Sun Devils your first listen every day. Remember this podcast is free and available on all platforms such as YouTube if you would like to see a visual format of this podcast. We're also pretty much wherever you get your podcasts on an audio platform. If you're on Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Odyssey app, we're there and available Monday through Friday. The best Arizona State Sun Devils content in the whole world. Speaking of great Arizona State Sun Devils content, if if you love reading more than you love listening, then you got to check out my friend Donnie Druin over at All Sun Devils. You got to make sure that you're keeping up to date with all all the latest information. It's... It's where I get a lot of my sources from. So props to you, Donnie. And Donnie, how the heck are you, my friend? I'm great, Richie. Thank you for having me. I feel like it's always a good day whenever we're locked on Sun Devils and all Sun Devils uh, combined forces. So I'm looking forward to a pretty decent episode. I feel like this might be the best one we've done yet. I'm very excited for it. Uh, Donnie, I, I, I got to tell you, this, this is something that sparked my interest earlier this week when I read one of your articles, and I'll be sure to make sure we shout that out on the page as well, talking about the quarterback situation, how it's kind of shaken now, whether or not they should continue to look for outside sources. But in the meantime, if the good people want to find your content, where can they find that at? Yeah, go follow me on Twitter at Donnie Druin. And then go ahead, hit up all sun, on allsundevils.com, excuse me, or si.com slash college slash Arizona State. You'll be able to find all of our work there. Uh, spring practice is over, so it's kind of a dead period now until they get back up and running in the uh, preseason period. But anything that happens in between, we'll be there to cover it. There you go. And you can also follow me on Twitter at richiebrads 36 and the podcast while you're there at LO underscore Sun Devils. Now, now that pleasantries are out of the way, Donnie, we got a lot to talk Finally. about today. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about with one topic. So we literally are going to be focusing an entire podcast, people, on the quarterback situation because I feel like me and Donnie could go on for a long time about this because there's so much to digest here. Mm-hmm. But let's start off nice and simple. Donnie, you were at all the practices. You were at the spring game. I want you to give me your your own take of the quarterback situation. Maybe we'll start with Borgay and Tyson and then we'll okay. go a little deeper. Okay. Uh, so it, Borgay and Tyson have always been the front runners for the quarterback competition. Um, I think Arizona state kind of leaving the door open for the other three quarterbacks on the roster, uh, guys like Dalen Macklemore, uh, Bennett Meredith and uh, the, the other uh, passers slipping my name right now. Um, But it's always been a two horse race between Tyson and Borgay and obviously two completely different quarterback profiles. You have Borgay, who's more of a smaller quarterback, just in terms of size and what you're looking for at the position, but uh, definitely considered more of a accurate passer. Uh, Definitely has the foot up whenever it comes to advantage, when it comes to chemistry, uh, throwing to his receivers and just already being within the program. And then you have the Alabama transfer, Paul Tyson. Uh, he's more of your prototypical guy. When, when you dream of a quarterback, you dream of a six foot five, 220 pound guy. That's precisely what Paul Tyson is. He has a tremendous arm strength. I do have questions about his mobility. Uh, you know, he's not the fastest guy in the world. Will really struggle to evade uh, any oncoming defenders inside or outside of the pocket. Uh, isn't really a threat to take off and extend plays with his legs. So he's more of your pocket passer type. Uh, it's always been down to uh, to those two guys. And what's funny is after the spring game, you know, you always want to 
let the quarterbacks kind of do what they do. And, you know, whether it's quarterback one or quarterback five, you want to give everybody an opportunity just because you don't want to close any doors. Uh, but offensive coordinator Glenn Thomas basically confirmed that it was only down to Tyson and Borgay realistically. Now, I have to tell you something, Richie. And Please. Th- th- this, this is not just me that believes this because I've talked with other people around Arizona State that believes this. I think the quarterback – the better quarterback, excuse me, the better quarterback for Arizona State and the quarterback Arizona State wants to win the quarterback job are two different people. Yeah. Okay. I, I do. Yeah. I I think the Sun Devils want Paul Tyson to start. I, I think with Arizona State moving to a pro style offense, trying to get bigger and better at every facet, there's a reason Paul Tyson came in. Now, I, I think you have to remember Paul Tyson jumped ship before Jaden Daniels announced he was hitting the transfer portal. And sometimes that can be a lost key component of the the quarterback job, or at least whenever you're discussing it. Right. But the plan for Tyson, I I believe all along was for him to take over Jaden Daniels, whether that was this year, whether that was next year, whenever it might've been, he was kind of their guy. I think the Sun Devils want him to be the starter. The problem is, I think Trenton Borgay is the better quarterback. I, I, I think Borgay is the better overall passer. I think his legs are so much better than Paul Tyson's. Like it, it's almost a night and day difference. And it, like mobility should not be everything. But it, at the college level, it's when you're spreading so the field out so wide mm-hmm. and so often, you definitely value and covet the the capabilities of a passer to at least extend plays, evade defenders, and maybe buy your receivers an extra half second to try to get open. Now, that being said, I did mention earlier, Arizona State's offense is moving towards a pro-style offense to where you're going to see a lot more double tight end sets. You're going to see some fullbacks being used this year. And it's it. going it, to look different than last year. Not drastically different, but is, it is going to look different. So you don't need a guy like Jaden Daniels to carry the ball 10 or 15 times a game. That's it's not going to happen next year. It, it, it's not, at least at Arizona state, it's not going to happen. So the mobility thing, whenever it comes to Tyson, isn't too egregious, but at the end of the day, you're going to need your quarterback to make plays. And that certainly is a help. I, I think Borgay is the better guy, but I think they ultimately want Tyson to start. And I think that's a conundrum they're stuck with right now. And that's not a totally surprising thing that you're telling me here is like, so for, for Arizona state fans to kind of paint you a picture the way that Donnie has to me, this, this kind of sounds like, so, so Tyson, obviously we knew coming into spring practice that he wasn't this mobile guy and that he, he was a big stand in the pocket, tall passer, which 20 years ago, is exactly the prototype quarterback that you wanted. But this is a much different league than we saw even 10 years ago. But you have Trenton Borgay, who is still on the smaller side, but he at least brings you the mobility aspect. And when we say mobility, we're not talking about Lamar Jackson or Malik Willis. We're talking like Baker Mayfield. We're talking about Sam Darnold, the guys who can move around, not not the dual threat guys who are running for a thousand yards. We're talking about guys who can, like you said, extend the play and let their receivers find ways to get open. And Tyson's not that guy where Borgay is, but Tyson has the more naturally gifted talents when it comes to being a pure passer. He's got the bigger arm. He seems to be a more confident guy in, in terms of what he can do as a quarterback than Borgay. But obviously, Borgay brings more to the table. So for an Arizona State fan, to me, from the outside looking in, it sounds like, would you rather have Taylor Kelly or Brock Osweiler? (laughs) I mean, here's the thing. That's a best case scenario. I was I was always at least whenever I knew Tyson was coming here, like everybody else did. I tried so hard to go back and watch pretty much any throw I possibly could of Paul Tyson. Just to get an idea of them. Yeah, really. And I even went back and watched some of the spring game footage that that Alabama had throughout the years. He pushes the ball downfield better than Borgay. And I think that is definitely a win for him. And he displayed that at the the spring showcase. You know, it felt like he took a lot more chances downfield 
um, than Borgay did, whereas Borgay definitely tried to manage the offense a little bit better. My thing is, I do think Borgay is the better and more consistent passer. But the problem is, is that heading into spring practice, you know, it, it felt like we really had an opportunity to see one of these guys separate each other, separate from each other. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Right. I, I walk away after 15 spring pra practices, including the spring showcase. I don't think any quarterback did significantly better or worse to to strengthen their case to be the starting quarterback. And I, I really feel like the the separation, and you have to remember, like media members were only allowed to watch practice for about an hour. So like the the team plays that we saw in practice, maybe, maybe five to six plays of the team period per practice before we were kicked out. So we really don't have an idea of who truly was the better quarterback over spring practice. I did talk with somebody though. And I, I did speak with a source that was there for the entirety of the practices and did get to watch every snap. And he told me Borgay was the guy. He, he told me Paul Tyson is a great kid. He's a good addition to the quarterback room. He obviously brings a lot of strengths, but Borgay is the better quarterback. And I, I think we'll see if either one is able to kind of win the quarterback job, it'll be interesting to note whether or not Arizona state does want to roll with Borgay given his size and, you know, throwing him into a pro style offense and seeing how that's going to roll out. And I mean, that that's something we'll go ahead and talk about here in just a moment is the impact that these guys will have on the offenses. But with that being said, we're going to hop into a real quick break. When we return, like I said, we got to break down the way that these offenses would be impacted with either of these quarterbacks. So we'll be right back on the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. That's not the right button. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, guys, I got to tell you, uh, Built Bar is going to be your best friend in the whole wide world when you're trying your best not to give up on your New Year's resolution. Go to Built Bar. And I'll tell you what, if you go there right now and check out what they got, they got everything you want. If you haven't had the Puffs yet, you're absolutely missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat covered in 100% real chocolate, just like all Built Bars are. There's so many good flavors too. From yummy cinnamon churro to coconut marshmallow and banana cream pie, they're so good, they're going to be your new favorites. And again, Built Bars are all covered in 100% real chocolate. And if you go down to the macros chart on the website, you'll be blown away with how these bars are high in protein, low in calorie, high in fiber, low in carb. And again, they focus on the flavor first. They make it delicious and they figure out how to, how to make it healthy after. I don't know how, but they nail it every time with flavors like mint brownie, coconut and coconut almond. New for this month is the white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious, and there's new flavors coming out all the time. So do yourself a favor and go to Built.com right now and use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And again, we thank you guys so much for making the Locked on Sun Devils your first listen every day. Remember, this podcast is free and available on all platforms. Now with a big announcement for you guys, starting Thursday, April 28th, Tune in to the Locked On NFL Draft's live coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft with all three days of real-time analysis from our extensive lineup of experts and insiders. And for those of you dying to know who your team will take, catch Odyssey and the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special hosted by Brian Peacock and former scout Matt Williamson of the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show all week leading up to the first pick. You can check out the Locked On NFL Draft live on the Locked On NFL Draft YouTube page and the Odyssey NFL Mock Draft on Odyssey and Locked On NFL Draft podcast feeds. The Locked On NFL Draft Live will be April 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern, April 29th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, and April 30th at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, the Odyssey NFL Mock Draft will be April 18th through the 22nd, as well as the 25th. Make sure you guys stay up to date on that. There are a lot of Sun Devils in this draft. You don't want to miss the opportunity for the for the over that me and Connor said at three and a half to hit. I'm just saying. Donnie, let's let's get right back into it. So yeah, we talked we talked about in the first segment 
the the differences between Borgay and Tyson, who stood out the most, who you like, who the team seems to like, who the media seems to like. Now I want to talk to you about the offenses, because as you pointed out, ASU is going to head towards a more pro style offense, which is something we haven't seen in in decades literal decades of Arizona State football, probably back to the Jake Plummer days in the 90s because you've had spread offenses for so, so long under guys like Dirk Cutter and and Todd Graham and Dennis Erickson and Herm Edwards. But in comes former Super Bowl winning head coach Brian Billick, as well as all sorts of new faces to the to the offense because, because Zach Hill is gone. He's no longer with the program. So Glenn Thomas is taking over. You've got a lot of new moving parts, and you would feel like this might play into the favor of Paul Tyson. But overall, whoever the better quarterback is, you should try and fit you you should try and fit the offense around them. It's never smart to try and force a square peg into a round hole. You can't force a quarterback who's not strong enough in a certain offense to fit that offense unless you're trying to fail. So taking a look at these two. Let's start here. If if you are truly set on a pro style offense, naturally Tyson's probably your guy. But is this something that Borgay could fit himself into, or would that or would this be a struggle for him? Uh, no, I, I absolutely think Borgay could kind of fit himself into. I, I do agree with you that Tyson um, is probably better suited to run that offense, you know, considering it is a pro style offense and uh, his strengths, uh, you know, going back to his days at Alabama do kind of align with running that system. Now, not necessarily the problem, but what's interesting and what will be interesting to monitor is. When Glenn Thomas spoke with reporters uh, the second day of spring practice, he talked about having to mold the offense uh, somewhat to the strengths of the quarterback, which you have already said is a uh, very wise thing to do if you're an offensive coordinator to try to maximize not only your quarterback, but your offense in general. If you value winning. Sure, which is something I I think the Sun Devils should start doing sooner rather than later. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with that is that you don't know who your quarterback is. You didn't know then. You don't know now. And Herm Edwards after the spring showcase said that we probably wouldn't know until the summer, which left the door open for another topic that we're going to discuss here in another segment. But I think I said earlier, Borgay is the better game manager, and I will stick by that. I don't think an offense with Borgay being featured and an offense with Paul Tyson being featured as the quarterback one. I don't think they're going to be drastically different. And here's why. Hit me. The The, the Sun Devils will return another strong running game. Rashad oh, yeah. White and Chip Trainum are gone, but Xavier Valade looks, everything is advertised. Daniel Angada looks very, very strong. And I would not be surprised to see him break out this year. And then, you know, you have a couple more guys, including four-star running back Tevin White, uh, the, the top recruit in ASU's 2022 class, also featured back there as well. There's a lot of really good running backs Arizona State has. They seem pretty confident in their offensive line, despite having to replace three out of five starters from last year. And their receiving core hasn't gotten better. Actually, they haven't really added anybody from from an outsider's perspective. So they're kind of rolling with the same crew of guys, despite losing a couple via the transfer portal. Um, The motto for Arizona State, dating back to at least last year, and this is what Jaden Daniel struggled with, is look, man, Hand the ball off 25 times a game. Let your defense make plays and don't turn the ball over. And you're going to win nine games a year. You are going to find yourself in a lot of football games doing that. The problem with Jaden Daniels is that he wasn't able to do that. I don't think this offense is going to be very drastically different from last year. I think Arizona State is still going to run the ball pretty heavily. And I I think the way they do it is going to be a little bit more different Um, from the offense that we saw in spring practice. A lot of play action a lot of motion and there there is going to be a heavy dose of uh, pistol usage as well just in terms of formations and schematics and all this stuff too but a lot of pre and post snap motion a lot of play action like our like i already said the best quarterback for arizona state is going to be the guy who doesn't lose them the football game now i do think with tyson at the helm they'll be more willing to push the ball downfield just because that is one of his strengths but like 
I, I don't think Arizona State has a, a, a valuable deep threat to where it, you would be enticed to do that a couple of times a game. No, hundred percent. So it, it, it's, it's one of those things where the better quarterback should get the opportunity. And the good news, like, like you pointed out, and I love that you pointed this out is you have a run game to rely on so that this makes a transition a little bit easier because you do have Valade and Nagata and Tevin white, and the, the other kid who stood out, whose name is escaping me at the moment. Uh, there's Deontay Elliott, uh, George Hart the third. Elliott was the one I was thinking of. Yeah, Deontay Elliott. But you, you have a lot of talent in the run game that should be able to, to really power this offense while you get the quarterback situation figured out. And it, it's also interesting you point out the receiving core because they're – there truly is just about everything back. Ryan Thompson, Ricky Pearsall, Andre Johnson, your top three options returning. Mm -hmm. uh, LB Bunkley Shelton is a guy that I've always had had a heart for, and mm -hmm. I think that in a bigger role, he could still be pretty good. You do lose Johnny Wilson, and you lost uh, Jordan Porter, but neither of them were in an overly massive role for Arizona State. So you do have familiarity in the wide receiving room. It's just different quarterbacks and and that's something that could play into Borgay's favor mm -hmm. is that he knows these guys so that could be another situation there uh and and tight end I don't know if you upgrade but you you don't exactly downgrade going from an inconsistent Curtis Hodges to a very unknown uh Messiah Swinson can, but, I, can I tell you something please please I think Swinson's going to be in for a big year yeah, so that's that you're not the only person I've heard that from Swinson um, is a big dude. I, I think he's six foot eight. I'll have to go back and check after doing the podcast, but he's a huge dude and he just looked everything that you want out of a tight end at the college level, man. I mean, he looked super good. And Jalen Conyers playing behind him is that like 1A, 1B, like double tight end duo. I, I think it's going to catch a lot of people by surprise this year. And it, it wouldn't surprise me based off of the pure athleticism that he has, if he can put it together as a receiver. I mean, there's just very few guys that can stop somebody that's built like Swinson, but getting back to the quarterbacks, it they're they're just going to have to find a way to minimize the mistakes. Like you mm -hmm. said, if you're not turning the ball over and you're just letting a very good ground game do what it's always done well, then like you said, you, you could be a nine win team like this. This isn't a terrible football team. I think, I think the, the downfall of Arizona state has been like greatly exaggerated. I do not think they're going to be a team that is going to win three games this year. Now, with that being said, they're not a nine win team. In my opinion, I think they're right around that six and six range, depending on how everything gets reloaded, because I think the defense even though they lost a lot, they're also getting a lot back. But mm -hmm. th th this is a whole other spiel that we could get on. But and and there's plenty of time for you to come back on and talk all this with us, obviously. But getting back to the quarterbacks, like you said, just dumb it down and make it as simple as possible, right? Right, and th that's Herm Edwards said on the first day of spring ball that the guy who's going to win the quarterback competition will basically be who can get everybody organized and who can communicate better. Because we have to remember uh, the, the days of the quarterback and the offense basically staying on the field, not huddling and looking at the sideline and seeing Daffy Duck, Tony the Tiger, and upside down letter Q, and then the color blue all on the board to <laughs> let them know what play is going to happen. It's done. Like they, They're huddling up this year. And you know, that's really going to put an emphasis on who can communicate the best, who who can act as that field general. So I, I really feel like uh, you know the communication skills of a guy like Paul Tyson, like you had already brought up, I think that might be able to play into his favor too. So like there, there's really no telling who is actually going to win the battle. Um, it's pretty much all preference. It, it really, really is. If you want the upside of a guy who can potentially push the ball down the field for you and stretch it out, you probably go with Tyson. Um, if you value traits, if you want a game manager, I think you go with Borgay. And like we've been talking about in the last 10 or 15 minutes, you basically only need to not turn the ball over and manage the offense for Arizona State to be a very, not a very, to be a good team. 
heading into 2022. And of my personal opinion, I just think Borgay gives you that better opportunity. Well, and we'll leave, we'll leave it right there because there is another comment that Herm Edwards made that I would love to get into more detail with you, but that is going to lead us into our second and final break. When we return for the third and final segment of the podcast, we're going to talk something very, very interesting, and I can't wait to get into detail with it on you guys. This is the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now nearly impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the supplies and parts you need for your car. Why endure often pointless or seeming, seemingly intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer and choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pockets. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more on the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, with prices reliably low for every customer. They have everything you could possibly need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go and explore their easy-to-use website today to find a solution to all your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see the parts available for your car or truck. Write Locked On in their How Did You Hear Us hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, and we're back for the third and final segment of a very fun podcast that me and Donnie have had so far talking about the quarterbacks. And we talked about the quarterbacks on this roster. However, there was a direct quote from Herm Edwards that has stuck out like a sore thumb since the beginning of spring camp. That quote being something along the lines of, is the quarterback on this roster? And there was all sorts of directions that we could take that, but literally what he's saying and there's there's no there's no gray here. It's black and white. You read what Herm Edwards says. He's not a mysterious guy. You, you he's a very easy to read guy. Essentially, do we do we still need to look for the guy? Now, Donnie, let's start here. I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll run it over to you. Dude. How about that? <laughs> so I. <laughs> Somebody's like, Herm, how do you feel about the quarterback room? Like, like, do you think like any of these guys are the answer? And Herm's like, well, if the quarterback here, I hope he's here. Yes. And, thank and you. Herm, what do you mean you hope the quarterback is here? Bro, it's the start of spring practice, man. What do you mean the quarterback might or might not be here? <laughs> Go Wild. Get him. And I, Go get I had, him. yeah, I had a lot of people. Um, because obviously I typed away on my laptop about that quote. And I had a lot of people um, say that, oh, like, that's just clickbait. He's just trying to light a fire underneath his guys. No, no. It, it, the possibility of Arizona State adding a transfer quarterback, transfer portal quarterback, excuse me, has been very real since Jaden Daniels left. And Richie, we're done with spring ball. We're done with spring practice. 15 practices have come and gone. That portal door is still very much open, very nice. much. It, Herm Edwards said after spring ball that the team had about seven or eight scholarships left. Two of them, he said, were going to go to improving the cornerback depth. So ex expect some um, some portal news uh, in the secondary coming sooner rather than later whenever it comes to that. They got five other scholarships that they can hand out. And, you know, and I'll, I'll let you take the reins over from here because there's one quarterback in particular – that everybody in Tempe is gushing over, and he's still available. Yeah, and uh, but before we even even move on from there, that uh, you you had made a point that I really wanted to to emphasize was was the aspect of you you truly haven't had one guy stand out with fifteen practices and a spring game go by. We're not sitting here like Borge is a starter yeah. or. Tyson's the starter there. There's still so much gray area here, which is why the door is open. And Donnie, as much as I want to start gushing about him, I, I want you to tell the good people what I had touched on earlier in the week and hundred percent had to credit you to this because 
that, that it was such an interesting point. And I, I've been telling you, and I've talked to my dad, and I've talked to former co-host Connor about this. This would be a move that would get me really, really excited. Like probably like emergency podcast kind of excited. <laughs> I'll take it back even a step further. Um, okay. Because when th there's been name after name of quarterbacks hitting the portal this offseason, like it oh, truly insane. was a star studded list whenever you looked at quarterbacks finding what they hope to be greener paths heading into 2022. It's what calls as of, needed. As of a week or two ago, the quarterback population was pretty much only down to a guy like JT Daniels and Florida quarterback Emory Jones. Uh, Daniels, a couple of days ago, committed to West Virginia. He's off the market now. And Emory Jones is basically the only, I don't want to say <clears throat> valuable or like starter worthy because there are guys still out there in, in the ether of the transfer portal that could probably come in and do a solid job. But whenever you're looking and talking about name value and somebody who is going to sell tickets, somebody who is going to improve your offense, somebody who is going to get people talking about Arizona State and get you hopefully to where you want to be in 2022, it's a guy like Embry Jones. And we were talking before we uh, hit that nice little record button there in, in the top left about how you lose a guy like Jaden Daniels and how that impacts certain stuff. And like you just said, the, the Borgay Tyson battle is still as unclear as it was from the first day it began uh, at spring ball. Emory Jones would walk into Arizona state and be the starter probably right away. Immediately. Probably right away. My and thing. An I, I, I do agree, but, and we can dive into this if you want. Oh, we I will. don't, I don't think he moves the needle that much. Yes. I, I do think he would be Arizona State starter. I don't think he's winning the Heisman. I don't think he's leading ASU to a Pac-12 title and, and anything crazy like that. But if Arizona State is looking for a guy, he's probably your last option left. 100%. And and there's so many directions I want to take this. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to jump around as best we can so it doesn't turn into an hour-long podcast, which I'm fine with. But... Obviously, time we have time to be considerate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know you guys are probably almost at your work by now, so don't you worry, early morning drivers. We'll wrap it up for you. But the the first point I want to start with here is that you're you're 100 right. This move doesn't move the needle in the sense of you just went from a six and six team to a ten win Pac-12 South winning team. What it does do for you is it stopgap. And it helps you to where you're not falling off a cliff because the reason why so many people are saying ASU is going to do really bad this year. And you have some people claiming that they're going to finish last in the South, which first of all, Colorado is still in this, in this division. So, so is Arizona. Yeah. Oh dude, there, there are some big time U of A truthers out there right now, believe mm -hmm. it or not. So I, I don't know, maybe Will Plummer is doing something crazy that I just don't know about. But <laughs> he's not even Jake's kid, so I don't know what to tell you, man. But neither here nor there. What, what it does do is it makes it so that you don't, you don't fall off a cliff and you stay very competitive. And starting with the first point here, and I feel like this is a very important point that I really, really want to hammer home right now. Herm Edwards is in the midst of a crossroads here. His career at Arizona State could be coming to an end. And the best way for him to not do that, surprise, surprise, is win football games. Now, with Paul Tyson and Trent, Trent Bourget, you're playing the long run with them. Because odds are, if, if they're your starters for the entirety of the season, I feel like you are a 6-6 six and six team. Which, is it bowl eligible? Yes, it is. But you're playing in the Sun, parentheses, Devil's Bowl in a best case scenario, but with Jones, like you said, there's not a huge drop off from him to Jaden. In fact, I would tell you that he might even be a little more explosive than Jaden. There, there, there felt like he, he was, he was a more consistent option than Jaden with, and, and I mean, 
if you're a box score guy, then compare the fact that he had better numbers across the board and he played in the SEC. But nonetheless, in, in a worst case scenario, same playing field. Yeah, and, I think you're sorry to interrupt you. I think no, no, you're no, getting no. about the same anyways. level um, of play whenever it comes to them. Yes. I, I, I'm going to say it, man. Say it. I don't think it is a wise move. Sorry, I, I'll retract that. I think a quarterback coming here right now from the outside would be set up to fail. Okay. I think sp- spring practice has come and gone. You won't have an opportunity to truly prove yourself. You are, at this point, considerably far behind in terms of learning a new playbook, which is something Borgay and Tyson have had to do, but they they are months ahead of you whenever it comes to that. The the chemistry with the offense, the offensive line, the receivers is night and day different from where you are at to compared to where Tyson and Borgay are at. I, I just I don't think if you were to get a guy right now, it, it, it would really not make a difference, but the guy would struggle to truly separate himself from the rest of the pack. Now, if you get a guy like Emory Jones, you already have a good idea of what he can do. So like yes. plugging him in to Arizona State's offense wouldn't be as difficult as it might be for somebody else to come through. But at the end of the day, I, I do think we need to realize and recognize that whatever guy comes in, if there is another guy that comes in, is going to be considerably far behind. It's going to take a lot for them to catch up by the time preseason camp rolls around. Well, and that that that's another thing that that is a very good point and something that I I will absolutely take into consideration, especially when I realize how excited I get over the thought. Is a, a huge aspect here is like you said, spring ball's gone. That was your opportunity to really get the playbook down, begin to establish chemistry, not just with your teammates, but with your coaches, more importantly. Mm -hmm. So you, I think you put it perfectly. You'd be way behind the eight ball right now, no matter how talented you were. Uh, CJ Stroud and Bryce Young would be behind the eight ball here if they were to transfer to Arizona State right now. I do, I, 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 I do, I do want to break a point really quick. Please. And th- th- this does align w- with your thought process and why like somebody um, who wants another quarterback would be excited to go get a guy like Emory Jones. Emory's probably like, if you are going to go get a guy, you're going to want a guy like Emory because yes. granted they are going to be behind. But to your point that you brought up and I'm glad you did, you saw what he could do against the sec level defenses. Now, granted, like, he, he wasn't writing any Heisman Memorial Trophy speeches. Like, he wasn't getting ready to accept, like, any, like, Offensive Player of the Year awards or anything like that. But he did, for the situation he was in, he did pretty damn good, all things considered. So if you are going to have a guy behind the eight ball, like you had pointed out, might as well be a guy like Emery, right? Yes, absolutely. And, the, and, and probably the biggest thing for me that would excite me the most and this can also be a very bad thing. Okay, let, I'll preface it with that. Is sometimes the evil you know is better than the evil you don't. And because Emory Jones reminds me so much of Jaden Daniels, it's one of those things where it's like, at least I go into the year knowing what to expect. And it gives you the opportunity to play the long game while also playing short term because Emory allows you to win now. But it also gives Tyson and Borgay another year and opportunity to continue growing and to to a certain extent i mean no, it, I, 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 I do theory. agree I, I do agree um one thing i have also not heard but there's been rumblings of okay um so i don't know how true this is so i, I don't want to point put it out there as a report um so i'll just put my own personal opinion behind it i think if borgay does not win the starting job i would not be surprised to see him in the portal Tyson is kind of stuck here. Tyson already used up his NCAA eligibility to immediately transfer without having to sit a year and play him. So I think at worst, he would want to compete with Emory, whether it be this year or next year. I think Borgay feels like he could play right now. And I feel like he's either going to be a starter at Arizona State or somewhere else. And I really do. So I I would not at all be surprised um, if Borgay hits the transfer portal. And I, I just get the feeling that 
all five quarterbacks are not going to stay there. Finn Collins is the other passer that I had forgot to mention earlier whenever naming the five starters. And you have to figure one of these guys is going to transfer out, right? Like and the, all five guys aren't going to be content with where they're at at ASU. No, a hundred percent. I think the one thing that would scare me about that situation is re- rewind a few years ago during the Manny Wilkin days. And Wilkins was a good quality quarterback, but you saw two guys transfer out who had probably more success elsewhere being, oh my God, Bryce Perkins, there it is, over at Virginia and Brady White with Memphis. And it was one of those situations where, again, Manny was really, really solid. I believe I had him just outside my top 10 all time when I did that list a few weeks back. But you... You definitely, I feel like, missed out on the two better quarterbacks. And if Emery comes in, he is short-term. He is a one-year guy. And Borgay leaves, and he balls out somewhere, you're going to feel so dumb. And the the uh, the last point I want to make here is I do like Borgay. Like, I'm not sitting here trying to slander him just because I want Tyson to be the starter, I think. I don't know. I'm so I'm so in and out on both of them. But I I truly would not be angry with Borgay as the starter and I think he can be more than good enough for the team to win games. What I want to know is somebody's got to win a starting job, right? Like right. Some, somebody's going to be the guy. You're not going to roll out a two quarterback system, which by the way, the, the old verbiage comes up time and time again whenever you're evaluating Arizona State. If you have two quarterbacks, two quarterbacks you don't have you any. You don't have any. Well, exactly. <laughs> I wonder how short the leash is going to be for either of the guys that starts. Right. So let's say they name Borgay to starter. Borgay goes out there first like two or three games and they just look awful. They look terrible. You have the fans booing at Sun Devil Stadium all 20,000 of them and you have hey. like Paul Tyson <laughs> chance going and you know, it's, it, there's pressure. There's pressure because like you said, Arizona state needs to win. Now, if yep. Hermie wants another job next year, he, they need to win now. Yep. How short is that leash going to be for the starter and how, how willing would they be to adapt if they need to, to put the second string guy in? hundred percent. And that, that is precisely where the problem lies, which is pretty much the final point that I want to make with Emery. If you're trying to win now, you're trying to save your job, Herm, which we all know you are. Emery is the guy because Emery is the best option of all of them. Even bringing him in right now, highest upside, highest floor, most explosive. He will put, he'll put heat in the seat. Because you're you're gonna have people that are gonna want to flock in and watch a guy who is athletic and exciting like Emory Jones is. But again, this isn't a guy who makes you a 10 win team. He just makes you better than a six win team, which is I, what I, that's what he needs right now. I, I do agree. And to kind of like put the cherry on top of that point, everything is shaping up to this being Herms last year. Like yep. His feature is very cloudy. Like whenever I say it might be Herms last year, there's so much uncertainty to it. Like he might stick around for another three years. He might be gone after, you know, the final whistle blows and whatever bowl game they end up going to. Like nobody really knows. And you still have the NCAA investigation you have to worry about and the potential ramifications from that. So there's still a lot of uncertainty surrounding the Sun Devils. And I really like the point that you had brought up earlier like this isn't a doomsday thing like it's not some like great downfall that's being like exaggerated by pretty much everybody else in the pac 12 and what they want arizona state to be however i do think and i think it's interesting that herm of all people is kind of showing his cards publicly you you need to win now and i do think emory jones gives you the best chance to win now over a guy like Borgay and over a guy like Tyson. So I do think if you go and you try to get Emory Jones, and I think that's the best option. And like I pointed out in the article, there's interest there between both sides. There's interest. Okay. And 
I think that's a good way to leave it off is a little bit of a cliffhanger spooky. there. Yeah. Yeah, spooky. <laughs> that is going to go ahead and wrap up a Wednesday edition of the Locked on Sunnivals podcast. Again, Donnie, thank you so much for swinging by. Number one friend of the podcast. Always love having you on. Where can the good people find you and your content? Yeah, thank you, Richie. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Go to find me <laughs> at Donnie Druin on Twitter and follow All Sun Devils at All Sun Devils. Go ahead and visit allsundevils.com for everything Sun Devils after you, of course, are done listening to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. Yeah, we definitely have the best content. If if you're looking for something written, go to Donnie. If you're looking for something that you can listen to, come to me. And if you're looking for both, Donnie's on here pretty often. Number one friend of the podcast. But Thank you guys so, so much for making the Locked on Sun Devils your first listen every day. Remember, the podcast is free and available on all platforms like YouTube if you want to see us in a visual format. You can also check us out wherever you get your podcasts on an audio platform like Spotify, the Odyssey app, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. You got to make sure if you're on Twitter, give me a follow at RichieBrads36 and follow the podcast while you're there as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Now, do yourself a favor. And make your second listen locked on NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. Just like the Locked on Sun Devils, it is free and available on all platforms. And until next time, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devils.